Christ with your Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let him go. Let him go there by go. the there blood of Jesus. Come out of him. Come on. Come on. All that witchcraft. Come out of him. Come on. Come on. Oh, here we go. Oh. Yep. This is the life of Jesus Christ right here. Yo, if you're not baptizing people, if you're not going to healing people, if you're not casting out demons, if you're not attending to the widow, the orphan, if you're not going out there, right? He says this, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Let's go in Jesus' name. Yo, we're about to go do our uh, sixth baptism right now. I'm on my way to the public pool right now. And guys, Jesus Christ resurrected. He died for us. You know, he bled for us. He was whipped. He was beaten. He was put up on that cross in replacement of us, guys. We deserve to be on that cross. And the fact that this, this God, the God of the universe, the God of the heavens and the earth, he chose, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ chose to come down here on earth in the flesh. The word became flesh. And he just and he decided and he said, I will take that spot for you, brother and sister, my daughter and my son. I will take that spot for you. So blessed is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for your beautiful, tender love and mercy and grace that you that you have on us. So guys, be blessed. I'm gonna keep you updated. I'm gonna film this baptism over here. So um, I've been filming a lot of stuff lately. I haven't posted it. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get people's permission to start posting stuff. But I really want you guys to come along this journey. It's not so I can I, I can be prideful and show you guys what I'm doing. Honestly, that's not my heart. I really don't care to, to show. I do care to show you guys, but I don't want this to be just a, a, a spectacle. I, I want this to be personal with people. But I do want I do want to start filming more. I do want to. I want you guys to come along with me to see the power of the Lord. I want you guys to know most importantly that you guys can do this not just me i'm not some special high echelon anointed man no guys i'm just a person that's saying yes to jesus i'm just a person that's saying yes to the narrow road i'm just a person that's saying yes until death so guys he can use you he's he's seeking those he, he wants to use so guys stretch out your hand and christ will stretch out his hand and grab it. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one shall come to the Father except through Jesus. He's the way. Ask him, God, make a way. God, open up a door. I'm knocking. I'm asking. I'm seeking. Come on now. Let's go. So, guys, be blessed. See you guys on the other side of the camera. I love you guys. Maranatha. I'll see you guys soon. Let him go. Let him go there by the there blood of Jesus. Come out of him. Come on. Come on. All that witchcraft. Come out of him. Come on. Come on. Out. There we go. Out. Yep. Out. 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 All of it. All of it. Out in the middle of Jesus. There you go. All the way out. Quit hiding in there. Yeah, that's it. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. You have no place in here anymore. You've been evicted. Jesus is here. This is Jesus' place. <coughs> Holy Spirit is going to be here now. Thank you, Jesus. You have no place in here. Rise with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bring him over here. Bring him over here. Bring him over. Okay, put, put that towel around him real quick. Stay in that water right there. Right now, we command every spirit to leave him right now. Every contract. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command every every wicked, foul, unclean, tormenting spirit to come out of his body. Come out of him. Come out of his body. Right now, come yeah. out of him. Yeah. Come out of him. Come out yeah. of him. All contracts are broken. Right now, with all ancestral and all curses that he's put yeah, on him. Yeah, you're hiding in there. Come out of him. Come out of him. All the way up. Keep going. All the way up. Come on. Keep going. Out. Out. You're done. You're all come found out. out. Come out of him. Brian come on, come on. belongs to Jesus. Go all the way out. Yeah, out. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. You have no place in there. Adam. All of it. Adam. Yeah. Go. Yep. You know it. You know it's your time is over. Your time is over. You don't belong in there anymore. Really speak out. Speak out in tongues. Let go. Let go. Let go. Full freedom. Come on. Full freedom. So we see in the book of Acts, he says, don't go far from here. My apostles, my disciples, don't go far because the Holy Spirit is going to come down on this day. And so they, they tarried for a little bit. And what happens next? They get filled with the Holy Spirit. They get baptized with the Holy Spirit. With tongues like fire, guys. They, they start speaking in tongues. They, they start, oh my goodness. 
just the power of God. And Peter comes out on the balcony, he starts preaching this fire sermon. And 3,000 men and women are cut to the heart and they say, what have we done to the Messiah? And so Peter said, repent of your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of, for the remission of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Guys, this is so profound, this is so beautiful. Guys, Jesus Christ, he said, there's one who's coming after me. And this is he, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, he will, he, in the book of Ephesians said, he'll, he will mark us. God will mark us with the Holy Spirit. And then that, that's a down payment. That is a deposit that he's saying he's coming back. He is the author and finisher of our faith. What he started, what Jesus Christ started, he came back the first, he came the first time and he's coming back for the second time. And why is he coming back the second time? To finish what he has started. He tore the veil on the day of Calvary and he's gonna wrap up everything. He's gonna wrap up this old earth and the old heavens. He's gonna create, behold, the new heavens and a new earth. And from the clouds will come the new Jerusalem and we will dwell with God forevermore in his beautiful kingdom. There will be no weeping, there will be no, no more sorrow, there will be no more war, no more weapons, no more fear, no, no more just killing, no more all of these wicked things that are in this world, that this, the age to come will be perfect. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, no flesh can inherit the kingdom of God. Guys, this is so beautiful because you know why? Because we live in such a wicked age right now. Guys, it's wicked. If you look around the earth right now, it's not getting better. And the Bible predicts this. The Bible prophesies this. And it says that the days are going to get worse. It's going to get hotter and hotter. It's, it's not going to get better, guys. It's going to get worse. And guys, we know that in America that there is going to be a great persecution of the Christian faith. In the book of Genesis, we see Joseph. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream and says there's going to be a great famine. So we need to store up for this time of famine. And ask yourself, guys, it's not just storing up and just like six months worth of like food that's perishable. But are you storing up spiritual food that is non-perishable? Matthew 4.4 4 says, man should not live off of bread alone. What proceeds out of the mouth of the living father. What proceeds out of the mouth of God, guys. For, for real like Jesus is being tempted he was fasting he was tired he was hungry and what had happened the spirit took him up to a very high place and Satan tempted him and right he, he gets tempted three times you know the Lord just gets on rebuking him you know he flees from the Lord and so we we see that Jesus is he's he's ready for this he was ready for this and he knew that this time was going to come that he was anointed to bring sight to the blind he was anointed to cast out demons he was anointed by the father to resurrect the dead he was anointed to heal the sick to lay hands and to declare the good year of the lord and guys he has told us go out and go and do this and this is what we're doing guys this is the life of jesus christ right here yo if you're not baptizing people, if you're not going to healing people, if you're not casting out demons, if you're not attending to the widow, the orphan, if you're not going out there, right? He says this, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And really, guys, I don't know what you guys are really doing. You know, I don't want to like get up all, all, all up on you, but guys, this is some good news. Jesus Christ told us there's work to be done. Ephesians says, we're not saved by our works, but we're created for good workmanship. And that God has works for us that we ought to walk in them. So guys, there's already work for you. you. Ask yourself, why did these men die for this gospel? Because they saw the power, they saw the love. God says, what love is one man that lays his life down for you? And that is Christ Jesus who laid his life down for us. So it is our, by Romans 12, it is our due service of worship that we offer our bodies a holy and living sacrifice. And that we, not, we can't be conformed to the patterns of this world. And that we need to renew our mind and we need to fix we need to fixate our whole spirit man onto jesus christ and we need to go out and realize what christ is telling us to do if you say yes to the calling of jesus don't expect it to be easy expect there to be a target on your head by the enemy he does not want the gospel to be carried forth he does not want people to be baptized in the holy spirit you know why you, you know why he's scared of that you know why so many people are not filled with the Holy Spirit? Because it's the greatest deception of all. He wants you to walk without power. He wants you just to say, I believe in Jesus 
and I'm going to sit down. I believe in Jesus. I'm just going to go to my church. I believe in Jesus. And I'm just going to hold an offering back for the rest of my life. You are created to hold an offering back for the rest of your life. You were created for great things in Jesus' name. God looked into your eyes before you were even born. He looked into the very fabric of your being. He said, I'm creating you in this day and age, in this era, for this purpose, for this reason. Not so you can sit there and hold an offering back. I'm not dissing you guys. I'm not dissing you sister or brother. But guys, you weren't created to hold that bag your whole life. You were created to lay hands. You were created to heal the sick. You were created to resurrect the dead. You were created to lay hands on the... On the on, <laughs> So I was going to say possessed. You were created to lay hands on the demonized and to cast out demons in Jesus' name. Guys, this power is for you. This lifestyle is for you. You can go out and you can have this lifestyle. Guys, I'm going to keep you updated. I know I went on like a whole thing right there. But Jesus Christ is alive, guys. Jesus Christ is alive and he is with us. Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father and he said he'll send the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Almighty God is with us. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like that video, you might like our other playlist, Uplifted by Faith, which is similar to this video. Or you can go to our testimonial page where saints of the Most High God are sharing their faith, sharing their testimony, being born again into Jesus Christ. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay blessed. I love you. Maranatha.